Christy affiliate here in Detroit, Michigan, and I am honored and humbled to be your officiant today. Before we go any further, I'd like to welcome Chief Chaplain George Aaron to start us off with prayer. Good morning. Sometimes we in, in, uh, need to remember in Detroit the love the city has for their first responders. All responders, fire, police, EMTs. Last week as I was walking around the city in my uniform at different occasions, people stopped to pay a tribute to the Savat, saying sorry for our loss. Today we are here to show the love we have for Sergeant Savad Johnson and his family and those he worked with. Most merciful God, whose wisdom is beyond our understanding, surround this family and department with love that may not be our, we may not be overwhelmed by their loss at this time. Give them confidence in your goodness and strength to come together cover them with their days. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. And thank you for that beautiful prayer, Chief Chaplain George Aaron. I was asked to give a brief story about how I know Sergeant Savad Johnson. I got to know Sergeant Savad Johnson about nine days ago. I did not have the honor or privilege of meeting him, but instead got to know him through many of you here with us in person and those of you watching. As a news reporter, I often am on the scenes at places where people are going through one of the more difficult days of their lives. And I have, throughout the course of my career, often heard loved ones described as he's a really nice guy, he loves his family, he would never hurt a fly, he's the life of the party, and as I watched the phrases and words that I heard describing Sergeant Savad Johnson on that day, I don't think I heard a single person refer to him as nice. I did hear somebody call him magnanimous. As though that word nice just couldn't cut it. And throughout that day, as I heard from many people who knew him, I began to feel as though I knew him a little too. And because I am a news reporter, I had to work. I had to write a story about what happened that day and about the man. And as I wrote the story, I was texting. I was working with an incredible friend and photojournalist, Danny Stricker, and I would send him a text to say, I'm sorry, my script is almost done. I just keep crying. And so it's just taking me an extra minute. And he would text back, okay. And I finally sent him a script and as he was putting it together, he was texting me, will you take a look and see if this looks okay? My eyes are blurry for some reason. Okay. As we got to know Sergeant Savat Johnson, through those of you who love him, his life touched ours, and it's made me think since that day and made me ask the question, what would the story of my life be? What type of impact okay. would it have on those not only who knew me, but those who only knew me after? So it has made me think a lot, and uh, I really appreciate all of you for letting us in uh, on his life. We do want to take a moment to acknowledge the elephant in the room, or rather the elephant in the wide open parking lot. We are in the midst of a pandemic still, and normally a memorial service like this one would have firefighters and first responders coming from all over the state, from out of state, from Canada. I've attended where the streets would be just lined with vehicles and rigs, and here in the parking lot we would be shoulder to shoulder, standing room only, but unfortunately this is in the midst of a pandemic, and I know that there are many watching here on the live stream who wish they could be here in person, but we know that though we are apart, we all are here together. 
we would like to take a moment to acknowledge some of those people. So in addition to the people attending here in person today, we are joined by Savant's extended family who are at a location watching this live stream together. Savant's fire family, Detroit firefighters across the city of Detroit are right now yeah. watching, joining us virtually honoring their fallen brother. Yeah. As our firefighters from across the nation yeah. and in Canada, all watching from their respective stations. Well, and firefighters have gone above and beyond that today at noon, they placed a rig outside their station and turned the lights on in order to honor Sergeant Savad Johnson as they joined with us. They're also sharing photos and videos of themselves and him in tribute to him on social media and all the channels using hashtag Sivad Strong. And that is something we invite all of you watching to do. We are also joined by another of Sivad's families, his moth family. The Moth. This is a group of people who bonded over the sharing and the telling of great stories, stories that impact lives. This is something you're going to hear a little bit more about later on this afternoon. This was also something, one of the many things Savad excelled at. Finally, we do know that there are countless numbers watching this live stream right now who perhaps never personally knew Savad but you've been touched by the story of his selfless actions and compelled to join us in this today, his celebration of life. And we're glad that you are here with us as well. I would like to next invite firefighter Roger Harper up to the stage to say a few words. He worked with Savant for a number of years in the fire department, and as you know, a co-worker is so much more than just a co-worker. They become friends and family. Firefighter Roger Harper. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. Trust and believe was many, one of the many profound message, messages of Sergeant Savai Johnson. It resonates deep within you when you truly and thoroughly digest it. It's a statement he would use to describe his complete confidence in something or someone. I once asked him, where did you get that deep saying from? He told me he received it from his brother firefighter Jamal Johnson. Many years ago, a wise chief by the name of Reverend Alan McNeely told me love, willpower, and influence are the three most powerful forces known to man. You can trust and believe. Savad will hit that trifecta daily. Anyone could spend one day or a thousand days with him and easily feel like you have a great friend or brother for life. Throughout my career, I've heard people mention Squad One, and it was usually followed with the name of an icon on the roster. I've heard the responses evolve over the years from Squad One, oh yeah, Freeman and them. Then it became Squad One, Bobby and his boys. And eventually, Squad One, Vod and his crew will be on the scene. What I really heard was trust and believe. Savad's vast array of skill sets, knowledge, training, experience, and unwavering fortitude on any emergency scene will give you assurance in him and yourself. Trust and believe. I recall how the squad would take the squad shopping. Mm. I'm sorry, I, I, uh, I just had a flashback of Savaz lamb chops. Wow. You could trust and believe uh, they were befitting and could rival any five-star restaurant. Yeah. So, 
back to the story. While, while waiting for the cook to shop, Lieutenant Disterath would frequently take us for coffee in a nearby bookstore. While waiting for our orders of coffee, tea, and latte, Savar would usually purchase a new book to expand his beautiful mind. Well, one day at work, Vod told us, man, do you know what the guys are call, uh, they're calling us at Engine 55s, at 55s? They're calling the squad the Latte Boys. Sure enough, at the next fire, Engine 55 had stretched, and as the squad crew approached the house, senior, fighter, senior firefighter Derek Stone loudly exclaimed, the Latte Boys are here. It was followed by Sergeant Jason Ridgway signaling with a big smile on his face. Always a good time at the double nickel. Savad's lessons, or gifts to humanity, as I like to call them, have taught us many things, and I'll leave you with just three. Trust that we all have the courage to receive his gifts and believe that bravery will take us to his level of enlightenment and peace within. All you have to do is trust and believe, just like Sergeant Savad Johnson. Thank you. Savad's sister, Ebony, and his Aunt Jo wrote a heartfelt tribute that they have graciously agreed to let us share portions of. I'm going to read you portions of that now. Savad Hashimu Johnson believed in getting the most out of this experience called life. He believed in the Bible, B-I-B-L-E, basic instructions before leaving Earth. He believed in the value of time, T-I-M-E. This instant means everything. In this shared time, we are not mourning the loss of Savad. We are celebrating the wins of a hero, a giant, a gift. Savad's first name is his mother's maiden name, Davis, spelled backwards, D-A-V-I-S, S-I-V-A-D. He mirrored his mother's values and beliefs growing up in a Christian household and inherited her love for poetic words. Savad's middle name, Hashimu, translates to respect, honor, or courage in Swahili. His parents believed it meant brave young warrior when they welcomed him into the world on September 5, 1970 in Detroit, Michigan. His last name is his father's, Johnson, William R. Johnson, or Bill. Retired from the Detroit Fire Department after 20 years of service, he also served as a U.S. Army combat medic in Vietnam. Bill modeled the values of service and courage, and his sons followed in their father's footsteps. Savad became a firefighter in 1994. He earned numerous citations, including the 2017 Detroit Public Safety Foundation Above and Beyond Awards Medal of Valor. At the time of his passing, he held the rank of sergeant assigned to Squad One. Savad's younger brother Jamal also became a firefighter, confronting the risks inherent in saving and serving others. A hero. Many refer to Savad as a superman. For 26 years, he ran into burning buildings. And ever the adventure seeker, he leapt out of a flying plane on skydiving adventures. He completed two Tough Mudder endurance events. Savad was physically strong and mentally strong, always striving to improve. He made the choice to endure cold exposure taking cold showers at 5 o'clock every morning to gain clarity and focus. And clearly, the world sees and recognizes him for his ultimate heroic act, 
sacrificing his life to help save three young girls struggling in the waters off of Belle Isle. A giant. Savad was a handsome giant who stood an impressive six th feet three inches tall. He magnetically drew eyes and people to him when he entered a room. Height will command attention regardless of who has it, but it does not convey character. And in Savad, there was an inevitable melding of the two. He was larger than life in so many ways. Savad was enormous in living out his values of service and dedication. One of his mottos was bravely do or bravely die. He had a colossal heart for people, most especially his daughters, Kendall and Hayden, and his ex-wife, Suzette. He unabashedly stated that his girls were his reason for being. He also had a special passion for the town in which he lived. His love for the city of Detroit nurtured his team spirit, leading him to design fashions that extolled its virtues. His commitment to the betterment of the city extended to the community and beyond to the world. A gift. Savad was a gift from God, who came through his parents, Bill and Retta, received by a host of us who saw him as our collective contribution to society. He was adored, shared, cherished, and lifted up. He was a gift, and he was gifted. His artistic vision was evident before he was four years old, drawing remarkable likenesses of the Volkswagen Beetle his parents owned. He honed those artistic skills to perfection, creating lasting works of art across many genres for many people. His was a gift of compassionate communication. Savad had the uncanny ability to see with an inner eye and hear with a third ear. Almost everyone he knew came to him at some point seeking his wise counsel, focused attention, or simple help. And they came away feeling like they just got what they needed. He often anticipated and responded to every request he possibly could, and it has been said that the present is a gift. Savad was present and is present. He is our gift of love that we open each day with gratitude, respect, and honor. Savad's children, Kendall and Hayden, siblings, Ebony and Jamal, Brandon Reed, Aliyah Muhammad, and Father Bill will forever love and honor him. Those who have gone before him, especially his mother, Retta, await with open arms his heavenly arrival. As for the rest of us, too many to list, aunts, uncles, cousins, nephews, nieces, half-siblings, in-law relations, friends, and firefighter family, we have taken him in. Savad Hashimu Johnson has become an eternal part of our emotional DNA. And again, that was part of a tribute written by Savad's sister, Ebony, and his aunt, Jo. We would now like to bring Savad's brother, Firefighter Jamal Johnson, to the stage. He has a few words he'd like to share. Firefighter Jamal Johnson. Good afternoon, everybody. I just wanted to uh, give you a warning that you're going to hear a lot of stories about my brother that's going to sound like someone is describing a fictional character. But trust and believe me, every bit of it is true. It's been that way ever since we've been younger. Uh, I always followed in his footsteps and knew that was the right direction to take. 
He was many things to many people, but he was more than a brother to me. He was my best friend. He would often say in life the goal isn't to achieve perfection. It is simply just to achieve progress, and that he did. I just want to share two quick stories, and uh, the first of those being, when I say I would follow that man anywhere, I mean it, and I knew I would be okay, which led us to jumping out of a perfectly good airplane. Um, as you know, when you're a first-time jumper, they don't let you go out by yourself and in this case scenario, we were the last ones to jump. And I remember sitting in the plane thinking, wait a minute, why are we doing this? But it's okay. The instructor turned around and he looks at us and says, so which one of you are gonna go first? And I said, well, he came out first, he can go first. <laughs> and no sooner than I saw him crawl to the edge of the plane. Just in a second, he disappeared. And I immediately said, I got to go get him. So I went ahead and made the jump. And for the next few days, for the next few days, we just were on somewhat of a high. Every time we saw a plane go by, we were like, man, we did that. And just one of many things that we had done together. Uh, to the fire department family. You know, my dad was a fireman and he had a great, great reputation. And when he came on, everybody asked my brother, hey, are you gonna be able to, you know, stand in your dad's shoes? Of course he didn't know, but he definitely did and even more. Uh, countless times, we wouldn't even know when he had got another citation. That's how many he had gotten. Uh, when I came on the job, they asked me, would I be able to fill his shoes? The only answer I could give them, knowing what he was capable of, is as long as I don't embarrass him. Uh, in fact, one of the worst fires I had ever been in, which was a flashover in a basement fire, uh, much like the military, they wouldn't let us run out of the same station. And when I ended up in that basement, questioning if I would make it out of that situation. Uh, Sergeant Glenn Smith came down and touched me on the shoulder. And all of a sudden, I just felt a deep sense of calm. We made it through that fire. What I distinctly remember about that fire is my brother showed up to that fire. That was a rare occasion for us to be on the same scene. And I just remember how grateful I was to be able to come out and hug him. Of course, for the people at that fire, they know, they said they had to hold him back when they started to blow the air horns for us to come out. It didn't surprise me. He was always going to make sure I was okay. And I want you to know how much he valued his family. Not just our family, but our extended family in the fire department. Many of you know him as an artist, and that he was. But I'm sure that the best masterpiece that he ever had come with is his two daughters, who we love and will be here for you. Our family is unique, uniquely strong, and we will get through this together. He's always had my back and a lot of others. And now we have the opportunity to have his. Thank you. We'd now like to bring Detroit Fire Commissioner Eric Jones to the stage. Fire Commissioner Eric Jones.
Good afternoon. I want to start by saying thank you. And I want to start first by saying thank you to Jennifer. I don't know if you saw her story. If you haven't, you need to look at it, um, WXYZ.com. It was the most heartfelt story of what occurred to our dear brother, Sergeant Savad Johnson. Jennifer, thank you for caring. <laughs> Lieutenant Governor Garland Gilchrist, Mayor Michael Duggan, President Brenda Jones, Council Member Janae Ayers, Chief of Police James Craig, um, any other elected officials and dignitaries that I'm missing. I want to give a special thanks to Chief Craig and the Harbor Master Team and his divers. We watched your men, Chief, search all night. They searched so long that we started fearing for their safety. So please pass along our deep gratitude to your team. The Border Patrol, the Coast Guard, the Michigan State Police, all of our brothers and sisters in blue, thank you for helping us search for our dear brother, Savad Johnson. The great champion Joe Lewis once said, you only live once, but if you do it right, once is enough. Savad did it right. To Savad's family, you know better than anyone that Savad lived every day, every moment of his 49 years of life to its fullest extent. We, the Detroit Fire Department, thank you for allowing him to share 26 years of that life with us. In Michigan, there is no duty to act to save another. We all know that this did not matter to survive. His sense of duty stemmed from the way he was raised. His sense of duty continued to increase during his 26 years of serving and saving strangers. So when he faced this life or death situation, he chose the life of those three children. There's a lot of concern about the classification of Savad's death. Is it a line of duty death or an on duty death? Some say that as soon as Savad started his heroic actions, he placed himself on duty. I can tell you that I asked myself a simple question. Was Savad's life cut short as a result of his actions to save another person? The answer to that question is obviously yes. Therefore, last week we began the process to classify Savad's selfless act as a line of duty death. The next concern is the new second fireboat. We procured this fireboat because we were preparing for the outdoor auto show and the overall increase in visitors to the riverfront due to all of the improvements and development. This second boat is smaller and faster and has all of the latest technology, including sonar and radiation detection capabilities. The primary purpose of this boat is to respond at a rapid pace to rescue purpose persons in the water. I have received an overwhelming number of requests and suggestions about what we should name the fireboat. The suggestions included fallen senior firefighter Walter Harris, fallen Captain Franklin Williams, and beautiful Skylar Herbert, the daughter of Detroit firefighter Ebby Herbert and Detroit police officer Lavandria Herbert. I want to share with you a conversation I had last Saturday as we searched for our dear brother, Savad. Is Ebby Herbert here? Can he come forward, please? Sure. Ebby told me that he was aware 
that Schuyler was under consideration for the naming of the fireboat. I admitted that she was. Ebby then graciously advised me that under the circumstances, he would understand that the boat was not named after Schuyler. Ebby, your gracious act is truly appreciated. You along You, along with many of our brothers and sisters, recognize the relationship and connection between the new fireboat's purpose and Savad's heroic actions. To the family of Sergeant Savad Johnson, I officially name Fireboat 2 the Savad Johnson. Thank you. He will truly be missed. If the family would like to take a moment to walk over, feel free. Mayor Duggan uh, and Chief Distaraf.
As the family takes their time in front of the boat there, we would like to welcome fire engine operator Martin Rucker. We'll have a musical selection down in front of the stage here. Fire engine operator Martin Rucker. And take your time in front of the boat, no rush. Good afternoon, everyone. I can't begin to tell you what an honor it is to be invited to bring a musical selection for my friend, our friend, our brother, Savad. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, a constant friend, is he, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me, yes, Jesus. Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. And I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eye is on the sparrow. And I know. Yes, I know, I know my Jesus watches me. Thank you so much. That was, again, fire engine operator Martin Rucker. His eye is on the sparrow. Beautiful, beautiful job. Thank you. Next, we'd like to bring to the stage a woman to talk about another part of his life that, depending on how you knew him, you may not know a lot about. We're going to bring Patricia Wheeler, producer of the Moths Michigan Story Slams and other area moth events, including the Detroit Monthly Story Slams, Patricia Wheeler to the stage. This was a group that Savad was very involved in, and she will tell you a little bit more about that. Patricia Wheeler. Good afternoon, everyone. I first met Savad in 2018. He was telling a story at the Moss main stage show in Flint. 
He shared with 1,800 strangers that day a story of running back into a fire to try and save a woman who was still inside after almost not making it out himself. A story that I'm sure is familiar all t to all of you out there. Maybe not Savad's story, but many of you have that own that your own story in the same way. There were 1,800 people in that theater, and you could hear a pin drop. He took us into that fire. We could feel the heat rise as he went up the staircase. We could feel his fear as he realized how close he was to death. And we could feel his relief when he found that woman in her bed. He took us to a place that he and many of you have been countless times, but most of us could never imagine. He took us into a world that was so unlike our reality, one that included risking his own life to try and save someone else no matter the risk, and he did it masterfully. I could not believe that that was his first time on the storytelling stage. Everybody gets a plus one when they come to a show as a storyteller, and Savad's plus one was his dad. If he hadn't already won me over with his incredible story, this would have done it. After dinner, we were having, or after the show, we were having dinner, and he told us about his daughters and how his family was his world. The way that he beamed when he talked about them, his smile was huge and his mustache was tiny. It made all of us smile too. Savad and I exchanged numbers that night, and I let him know that any time he wanted to come to our monthly show in Detroit to just text me, he had a permanent spot on the guest list, and that extends to his whole family now. He started coming and telling stories a few months later, winning a slam with the theme Lessons, by telling us a story of totally biting it on his brand new BMX bike that he got for his 12th birthday. At the championship show last, semester, last December, Savad's dad was once again there. So were his daughters, his brother, and countless friends. On that stage in the Senate Theater in Southwest Detroit, he told us about why he got up on his first Moss stage a year and a half before. He told us about how it had been during his year of yes, where after his mother's death, he decided to take any opportunity that came his way. Lucky for us. A year of yes. Think about that. Savad made the choice to take tragedy, a huge loss, and turn it into an opportunity to ch challenge himself to be a fuller person. That's when he jumped out of that plane with Jamal. Every story that he told at the Moth embodied that, whether it was about running back into a burning building after he almost didn't make it out the first time, or watching his friend have a full-on nut cruncher, his words, and still deciding to try and jump his new bike. Some storytellers focus on the laugh or shock value of a story, and while Savad's stories were always full of humor and were certainly always shocking, the point of his stories was always hope. Hope to save a life, hope to make a jump, hope to be an inspiration to his daughters by showing them how important it is to live life as full as you can. He always had hope, and by hearing his stories, we got to have that hope too. The last time that I talked to Savad was the Monday before he died. Thank you, Womack, for being in my alley and prompting me to reach out to him. We chatted about missing each other in the moth, and he said he was planning to attend our next virtual story slam, which is happening tomorrow. He ended our conversation with something that I just cannot stop thinking about. He said, make a good day. Make was in all caps. Make a good day. Think about that. I have thought about it every day, nonstop, since Savad's death. Make a good day. 
It is up to each one of us to do that, just as Savad did in his life. Make a good day. The year of yes. These are two incredible lessons I am taking away from having Savad in my life, in my storytelling community. I am committed to making each day as good as I possibly can, not just for myself, but for those around me. I am going to say yes when given the opportunity to do something that might scare me. Savad did those things. And because of it, the world got to know him not just as a dedicated father, son, brother, firefighter, but as a man who saw life as something to take by the horns and to live as deeply as he could. Savad's storytelling will live on forever, as will his impact on everyone that he met. I challenge all of you today to keep his memory going by having your own year of yes. Believe in yourself just as Savad did. And don't forget to make a good day every day. Thank you, Savad, for giving us all hope. Thank you, Patricia Wheeler, again from The Moth. Next, we'd like to bring to the stage President Thomas Gayhart. He is the Detroit Firefighters Association Local 344 President, Thomas Gayhart. Sergeant Savad Johnson was 49 years old when he died in service to others. A famous Scottish writer has written that each person's life is a diary in which we intend to write one story, but we write another. This writer warns us that our humblest hours come when we die. The time when we compare the volume of our life as written with that which we vowed to make it. Despite this warning, now it's not a humble hour for our friend, our co-worker, and our brother, Sergeant Johnson. For on the most important issues of life, the transcendental issues, his love for his family, and their love for him his sense of community, and the responsibility he believed that entailed, and his legacy and reputation for valor, honesty, integrity, loyalty, and hard work. The diary of Sergeant Johnson's life, as it is now written, matches up nicely with the life he obviously vowed to live. Sergeant Johnson was a 26-year veteran of the Detroit Fire Department. He came from a firefighter family. His father and brother were firefighters. So it is no surprise that he was a conscientious and courageous firefighter. Sergeant Johnson took joy in his work and strived doggedly for perfection. He demonstrated this every day. It was evident from the crispness of his uniform to the quality and precision of his work. In a world that seems to be sliding toward mediocrity, Sergeant Johnson stood out. He believed that there is something inherently good in doing the job properly. Sergeant Johnson took his responsibility seriously and discharge them with valor, as his actions for bravery attest. In short, he did his job. He made others around him better at their jobs. Sergeant Johnson died saving others. 
the greatest demonstration of love possible, the Bible says. But this was not an aberration or an unusual event for Sergeant Johnson. Rather, it is merely the latest example of how he lived his life. For this was a brave man. Now we often associate bravery with toughness. And true enough, bravery requires some toughness. But Sergeant Johnson was not just a tough, brave man. He was much more. This second generation, generation native Detroit firefighter had the skills and sensibilities of an artist. Not only was he skilled sketch artist whose work has been captured in books and hangs on walls throughout this city, but he had an attentive eye for the mosaic of life. Such a rare combination, physical and moral courage, and the keen insight to recognize life's beauty, complexities, and its mysteries. Every death in all the wisdom literature ever written, even the wisdom literature that predates the Bible, tells us that it is the journey of life that counts. This is so regardless of how long we live, Sergeant Johnson's death reaffirms this relentless fact. Sergeant Johnson made his life's journey meaningful for himself, his family, his co-workers, and for all those he loved and touched. There is no greater compliment to be paid. Sergeant Johnson lived a meaningful life. So the book on Sergeant Johnson's life matches up nicely with his principles and beliefs. And all of us are richer for it. On behalf of the Detroit men and women of the Detroit Firefighters Association, I offer our deepest condolences to the Johnson family. And at this time, we would like to make a presentation to the family. The first will be an IAF line of duty medal, and then a Bible from Local 344. Thank you and God bless the Johnson family and the men and women of the Detroit Fire Department. Next, we will welcome the Honorable Mayor Michael Duggan to the stage.
It is an honor to be with the Johnson family today. Bill Johnson, the patriarch and man whose service meant so much to all of us here, to Jamal and Ebony, uh, and to Savad's daughters, uh, Kendall and Hayden. And Hayden, I, I have to say something to you. Uh, the rarest gift in the world is the ability to make somebody smile when it's their saddest day. And God has given you that rare gift. It's very special. Um, and uh, I needed that smile when I, when I met you today. I started the day on Belle Isle. It's been a day of mourning in this city for the 1,500 uh, of our fellow neighbors we lost to COVID. Uh, I was accompanied this morning by the Herberts, by Ebby and Lavandria, who are mourning uh, the a loss of their five-year-old daughter, Skylar. And as you go through, and if you haven't seen it, you have to see the tribute, the hundreds and hundreds of pictures of those we lost. I got near the end, and there was Captain Franklin Williams. And you think about, it hit me as I went through here, uh, that when all these people were sick, the pandemic was spreading across the city, the Detroit Fire Department was helping, was charging into these situations. Our EMTs, our medical first responders, Savad Johnson, they took many of these individuals to the hospital. And when you think about that, you realize that in a very profound way, firefighters are different than the rest of us. And a week ago, Friday night, Commissioner Eric Jones called me. Uh, and he was very upset, and he's telling me that uh, he had a sergeant who has been lost in the Detroit River and was all coming out in a jumble. And I couldn't really follow him. Usually Eric Jones is the calmest, coolest person in the room. And I said to him, wait, you're saying children were drowning in the river and they called the fire department and the fire truck showed up and people, firefighters jumped off the truck and swam into the river? And he said, no, no, no. He said, Savad Johnson wasn't on duty. He was there with his daughter. It was his own time. But when those girls were in trouble, he responded. And you think again, firefighters are different than the rest of us. When somebody's in trouble, they're never off duty. He was on duty in what he did, and the decision by the fire department to call this a duty-related death was certainly uh, the right decision. I said to the commissioner, so, uh, so what are the prospects, he'd say, he said, look, he said, it's one in a million. The Detroit police have been out there for hours. He said, for anybody else, I would say it's hopeless. He said, but you had to know Savad. He was like Superman. He said, if there's anybody who can possibly survive this, it's him and the Detroit police dive team's going to be out there all night long until they find him. But as many of his fellow firefighters said to me, Savad Johnson was an amazing athlete. He was not an especially good swimmer. He made a decision when he jumped in the water. He knew he was risking his life. The next day, I was out while they were still searching for him, and I had a chance to spend some time to, with Jamal. And he's telling me these stories, just amazing, that uh, he was frightened as a public speaker, and he took on Toastmasters and became this incredibly accomplished speaker. He was illustrating children's books, uh, and, uh, and, and Jamal had this T-shirt on that was time. And I said, what does that mean? And he said, actually, he said, that's Savad's clothing line. This instant means everything. And I said, what a remarkable individual. But of course, as you've heard, he was just as remarkable a firefighter, uh, winning the Medal of Valor and going in to dangerous situations uh, over and over. Uh, and so Council President Brenda Jones uh, has asked me to let you know that there'll be a Spirit of Detroit Award that she'll be presenting to let you know uh, how we are all touched. But here's what I know for sure, that firefighters are the best of us. And Savad Johnson was the best of the best. What he did will never be forgotten, and I just want the Johnson family to know that this entire city shares your grief with you today. God bless you.
Thank you, Mayor Mike Duggan. Next, we'd like to invite to the stage Police Commissioner Daryl Brown. And I've been told that he has lived a bit of a double life. Before joining the police, he was a firefighter and served in the same battalion as Sergeant Savad Johnson. Police Commissioner Daryl Brown. Thank you. Thank you. We had to make one correction that once we're firefighters, we're always firefighters. There never was or was. We're, we're firefighters for life. And I just, I thank the family, Jamal and everyone for allowing me to come before you on behalf of the Board of Police Commissioners uh, for a resolution that we drafted. Uh, a lot of the language in here are things that, are words that have already been said and echoed and we can't echo them enough of, of our brother survive. I, I just want to tell you, we start out with the Bible's verse that says, greater love hath no man than this, that he may lay down his life for a friend. And no one survived for the last 20 years that he's been in my life and pouring experience and different things like that with me as a young firefighter. He would like it no better way for him to go because he lived that life of saving lives. He was unselfish with himself, with his talent, with his, with his advice and everything. And, and I can recall when I came on the job at Engine 59 in 2001, a young trial man, I, have, I had some thinking to do because that's when we had the 9-11 and I'm sitting there thinking, wow, this is really happening. And he was there and later that day we caught a fire. It was my first real fire. When we pull up, we got bullets going off everywhere. I thought somebody was shooting at us. So I asked the lieutenant, I can't tell you exactly what he said, but I said, uh, are we going in there? He said, well, we the fire department, ain't we? So somebody got me up there. And, you know, I, I, would, I didn't mind putting out a fire. I was worried about the bullets. He said, no, nah, they're just going off. You got to get in there and cool it down, and it'll stop. And we, we breached the door and got in there, and I said, he tricked me. <laughs> bullets was flying all over the place. But it was that courage and that, 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 that experience experience I had that I knew within him, knowing him, that I knew he would get me through this. And I knew that his advice and everything would guide me through it and we would come out of there. And just over through the years, the things that he poured into me as a, as a, as a young fireman and, and driving and driving the squad and everything, I had the opportunity to give some of that back, which I didn't have to do much, with his younger brother, Jamal, when he came on, he was a trial man with me. So I just thank God for the years that I was allowed to experience his life, even with the poetry. And a lot of you just don't know that the, the artist in him, the last thing that I believe he did for us was he created the, the bad shield at the Axman's Motorcycle Clubhouse. That is Savad's work that's there, and it'll be there. It'll be there forever. And as long as we can keep it there, it will be there. It is about a 10-foot uh, mural that he put on the wall for us. It's a shield for us. But... Never, never can we, we meet people that can think of no better person that, that, that I knew, better than myself, better than many of you that I know out here. And I know that, that our hearts are, are, are hurting, but I kind of feel and think that his spirit is here and he wouldn't want us to feel like that because he, he, he died doing the things that he loved to do. And you know what they say, if you go to work and you love to do it, you never work a day in your life. And that's who survived was. So I just want to read just the last part of our resolution to give to the family. It just says that the Detroit Board of Police Commissioners, speaking for the citizens of Detroit and the police department, award this resolution posthumously to the Detroit Fire Sergeant Savad Johnson for his 26 years of dedicated and diligent public service, his professionalism, his integrity, and standard of commitment to the city of Detroit and its citizens merit our highest regards. We salute you, Detroit Fire Sergeant Savad Johnson, for a job well done, as the Bible says, thy good and faithful servant. Thank you. Thank you again, Police Commissioner and Firefighter Daryl Brown. 
Next, we would like to welcome to the stage the Honorable Lieutenant Governor of Michigan, Garland Gilchrist. All right, good afternoon, everyone. This is a perfect Detroit summer day. This day is only fitting to be Detroit's first Memorial Day. This day when we celebrate the stories of so many who we've said goodbye to during COVID-19. But this is also the day that we celebrate the service and the story and the legacy of Sergeant Savad Johnson. And I'm thankful to be here as a man, as a father, as a Detroiter, as the Lieutenant Governor of the state of Michigan serving alongside our Governor Gretchen Whitmer. We bring both greetings and condolences on behalf of the entire state of Michigan and gratitude for Savad Johnson's service. I want to thank and also recognize and wrap our state's arms around the whole family, his daughters, Kendall, Hayden, Jamal, your service. Bill, thank you for your service. And I just want to say uh, the mayor was absolutely right, uh, Hayden. You are an absolute joy. And I think it's because you have that ability that every child does, which is to see the present through the eyes of the future. And that is what enables you to brighten every life you touch. We also want to acknowledge Engine 59. I want to acknowledge my good friend, Commissioner Eric Jones, Deputy Commissioner Fornell, all the other leaders, and of course, the mayor of this great city, Mike Duggan. The loss of a dedicated public servant is always, always difficult, but it's devastating or at least it feels so devastating when it's somebody who is so beloved by this city. Sergeant Savage Johnson was indeed an idol and an icon to everyone who had the pleasure of meeting him. You've heard this from every person who's come to the microphone. And that's because he was a giant and a hero in literally every aspect of life. His 26 career, 26 year career in the department all the examples of heroism that you all have heard about and that we all have come to know and that we don't have enough time or words to fill this stage with. But you see, only a hero can ignore their own personal safety to preserve the safety of others. They say that people die the way they live. He lived to save lives. He died saving lives. Only a hero can make the sacrifices that are needed in this profession unlike any other profession. And only a hero can do this service day in and day out with the silent humility to know that it is just simply the right thing to do. As we remember his heroic actions of this tremendous hero, let us think of how we can embody this in spirit in our own everyday lives. You see, you just heard from the previous speaker that scripture does tell us that greater Love has no one than this that they would lay down their life for their friends. I want to talk about another scripture from Corinthians that says that of faith, hope, and love, the greatest of these is love. And yes, we heard about the hope from my high school classmate, Ms. Wheeler. She talked about the hope that every story that Savad told gave every one of us. I want to talk about the faith and the love that his actions embodied every single day. The entire city of Detroit, all of our people, and all those in the state of Michigan who he touched, they could claim Sergeant Johnson as a friend because of the faith and love that he showed in his actions. And when his friends were in trouble, Sergeant Johnson was one of the first people to always answer any call for any kind of help. That's what we saw on that Friday on Belle Isle, when he answered the call of duty because he knew that duty was his service no matter what time of day it was no matter what day of the week it was, and no matter whether he was quote unquote on or off duty. He knew his service was needed and he didn't need to punch the clock to give it. Because of that bravery, 
and that quick action because of that act of love and that faith that he was able to do, that he was equipped with everything he needed to save those three young girls' lives, they are alive. He lived to take that action so they could live. So yes, he did leave us too soon. He left us with a legacy, however, that will guide us in the way that we need to take, that will order our steps for a generation to come. We will never be able to repay this tremendous debt of gratitude that we owe Sergeant Johnson, but we can commit every day to not just be a little bit better, but to be a lot better toward one another and for one another. So I challenge the way that his life challenged every one of us to uphold this legacy every day with our words and our deeds. I have no doubt that the brave men and women of the Detroit Fire Department, they will meet and exceed this challenge. I want all of us to step up, to stand tall for Detroit, to stand tall for Michigan, to stand tall for one another and say that we will do the same. Stay safe, stay healthy, and remember that Savai told the absolute truth, that this instance, that this moment of commitment, it indeed means everything. God bless you, God bless the family, God bless the Detroit Fire Department, God bless Detroit, and God bless the state of Michigan, thank you. As we near the end of this service, we will in moments have a closing prayer and one final brief thought. But first, we'd like to bring firefighter Joseph Palm, trustee of the Detroit Firemen's Fund Association, to the stage to lead the end of watch. We will now do the final radio call for Sergeant Savad Johnson. Detroit Fire Department, special detail to central office. Now ring the bell 
for Sergeant Savad Johnson's last alarm.
Our Father, as we come to the close of the celebration of life of the Sergeant Savan Johnson, we pray that you will be with us all, be with his family, his firefighter family, and all those know him as friend. God bless him, and may he rest in eternal peace. Amen. We just want to leave you with one final thought. Some of you may have noticed on the back page of your program, there is on the bottom in the center a symbol or logo that I'm told is a symbol that meant a lot to Sergeant Savad Johnson. Sergeant Savad Johnson, as you have heard, did his job and he did it well. And now, the rest is left up to you. Thank you. Okay, one final, final thought. You heard mentioned that uh, Sergeant Savad Johnson had a clothing line, and you may have seen that his family members are wearing some of the shirts from that line. I, Cheryl, it was a mid. Peer? P E E R dash A M I D dot com. P E E R dash A-M-I-D dot com. That is the website. And I also should mention that Savad, not only did he leave many memories behind, he also, during the course of this pandemic, created inspirational videos on a YouTube channel, Savad I Am. So if you'd like to hear more about him or hear more inspiration, Savad I Am, or the website, if you'd like to have and order one of his shirts. Thank you again.